Hi, welcome to Twisted Wave 101. My name is Mike. In this video, we're going to talk about getting a level and recording a take. Now, many of you guys will be recording into your computer with different devices. Some of you will be using a USB microphone, and others will be using an analog microphone through an audio interface. In both cases, however, you're going to want to plug the device into the computer before you open Twisted Wave, or Pro Tools, or Audacity, or any other program that you use your microphone to record to. It's important because when the program opens, it goes into the operating system and asks the system what's available to it for recording. If the mic isn't plugged in, it doesn't understand that it's available, and often you'll need to close the program, plug in the mic, and reopen it again. Today I'm using a USB microphone from Audio-Technica, and I have plugged that device into my computer. It's on, indicated by a blue light in the microphone itself, so I'm safe to go ahead and open Twisted Wave. I've chosen a setting and you might have seen this in the last video, that when I open Twisted Wave, I don't choose an untitled document to populate. I have it do nothing. I like this because I like to go up to file and create a new session and choose my sample rate and bit depth every time I start to record. Many of you guys working in voiceover who continually record the same type of spots usually choose an untitled document to populate so that you can just get into recording. Either way is fine. However, I just want to bring this up that a bit depth and a sample rate combination that are pretty standard for voiceover is what you see here, 16-bit and 44,100 hertz. If we were working in film, often we would be at 24-bit and 48,000 samples per second. And even some video coming from camcorders and DSLRs works in 16-bit and 48,000 sample rate. In any case, we're always going to be mono because we have a single microphone with a single person. If you're recording in stereo, you're just duplicating the data to two tracks and increasing the file size for no reason. Today I'm doing an audition, so I'm going to be choosing 16-bit and 44,100. This is also the combination for audiobooks as well. I'm going to hit OK. Now we're presented with the window for Twisted Wave, and for me to go ahead and get a level so that I can start recording, I first need to make sure that the program understands I want to use the microphone that's plugged into my computer. Computers generally are fairly stupid and don't understand what you need to do with them. So there are two ways to choose the microphone in Twisted Wave's preferences. I bring this up because it's often that I get audio files from people after they've purchased a nice microphone asking me why the audio quality is so bad. And it's often because they haven't gone into the preferences and chosen the microphone that they want to record with and they're recording from a distance of the laptop and using the built-in microphone on the lid of their laptop computer. Hence the bad quality. So let's go the long route, Twisted Wave Preferences, and move over to Devices. And if you've watched my previous video on the Preferences and Window buttons, you know about this setting here. In any case, your input device is the microphone you'd like to use to record. Like I said, I'm choosing an AT2020 USB microphone from Audio-Technica, so I'm going to use that to record. The output device is where the sound will come out of the computer. Because I'm on a laptop with just a USB microphone, built-in output chooses the in-port uh, sound card to my Mac. And if I plug headphones into the bat or the side of my computer, that's where the audio is going to come out, through my headphones. If you have an audio interface that you use, you'll choose the output device here, and actually the input device will be the same. And then you'll plug the analog microphone into the input device of your audio tech or of your US excuse me, of your audio interface. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. The quick way to do this is actually to move into the audio menu up here and just check input device to make sure that the audio technic has been checked here. Output device again is where you would choose built-in output for your regular laptop or if you have an audio interface you would choose a built-in output here. Some of you might even be using a USB microphone that has a headphone jack on it. In this case your input device and your output device should be the same device. If you're using a Shure PG42 USB microphone um, or an MXL009, and there are several other models out there, you'll want to choose your input and output as the same device and then plug your headphones into the actual microphone itself. The interesting thing about the Audio-Technica USB microphone is it doesn't have any dials or switches on it for me to change volume, and actually the maxim is, is that if there are any physical dials in the hardware world for you to change volume, that always supersedes software. And that's where you're going to do the volume increase or decrease of gain uh, for your voice when you're starting to record. So if you have an audio interface, you obviously have a mic preamp and an input stage there where you can turn that up or down. 
you have a USB microphone with more dials and switches on it, it's possible that you have that there. This microphone doesn't offer that. So interestingly, I need to actually go into my system preferences and into sound, and I need to choose input as my tab, and I need to go down and choose Audio-Technica USB. And the slider that you see in front here is how I increase or decrease the volume for my microphone in the Twisted Wave. To get a level in Twisted Wave, there are two ways to do it. The first way is to just hit record, and as I'm talking, you'll see a level will start bouncing. And if I flip over to my system preferences, I can then increase or decrease the volume, and you'll notice in Twisted Wave that volume is going down, 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 up, 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 up. This is how I change the volume with this microphone. I'm going to go back to Twisted Wave and hit stop. The other way to choose to look at volume as you're setting it is to go into audio and check input levels. And that'll let the input level bounce without actually recording, which is pretty nice. I've set a level here that's OK. So I can start recording. But let's talk about levels really quick. First, let's look at noise floor. Noise floor is the ambient tone of the room, the machines, the hiss, the air, and the things that are in your studio when you're not speaking. A good noise floor in a studio would be negative 60. Most people in their home studios are between about negative 40 and negative 50. And the mark of a good studio is a lower noise floor than even negative 60. To get your noise floor, what we can do is actually just be quiet and let it record or just watch the meter. Now, my fan is kicked on because I'm using a computer and a video recording at the same time, and so you probably notice that there's a hiss or a hum in the background. So my noise floor is going to be a little elevated at this point. But if I'm quiet, we can look at the meter, which is over here, that's bouncing on the right, and what we're looking for is where it bounces down near the bottom. So let's be quiet for just a second and watch that. You can see it's pretty variable. And actually, the quick couple jumps there, I'm not sure if that's from a boost of air in the room because I have a fan on um, or uh, from something else. But you can see that I'm probably around negative 50, uh, negative 45 to 50, which is OK. Um, it would be nice if I could get it lower. And actually, recording directly into your laptop next to a microphone is never advantageous because your fans always will kick on and they'll make noise. So if you can separate the computer from the situation, it's always the best practice. So I've set a level. I'm pretty happy. I actually have some copy down here uh, that I have taken from Edge Studio. It's a 711 copy, and I'm going to use this to record a take. So I've got my copy, and I'm ready to record. So I'm going to go back into Twisted Wave. I'm going to hit the record button, and then flip back over to my copy and start recording a take. So it's 2 in the morning, and you're starving. Nothing in the fridge, and nothing in the cupboards. You don't even have dog biscuits hanging around. You think about cooking, but then you remember the three-alarm fire that you started last time you tried using the stove. Well, check out 7-Eleven. There's got to be one right near you. They have everything from burgers to tacos, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 7-Eleven. Think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. All right, go back, hit the space bar to stop the recording. Pretty good take. I've done this copy a couple pieces or a couple times, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Um, maybe I would like to re record the beginning part of the copy because I don't like how I opened up the spot. So I'm going to put my cursor at the end with the forward button. I'm going to hit record. I'm going to flip back over to my copy and I'm going to do the beginning part again. So it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you're starving. All right, pretty happy with that. I'm going to go to the end again if my cursor isn't already there. I might have reviewed this, which we can do now, by placing my cursor anywhere in the audio and hitting the play button or just hitting the space bar. So it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you're starving. All right, now I want to record the tag again at the end, and later we'll go ahead and cut these pieces together. So I'm going to send my cursor forward to the very end. I'm going to hit record. I'm going to flip back over to my copy, and I'm going to record the end. They have everything from burgers to tacos, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 
7-Eleven, think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. All right, pretty happy with that. Let's say that in some other way you've recorded another piece of audio in another session, and to demonstrate that I'll go to File and New, and I'll record a whole nother session of just a small piece of audio. Let's go back to the copy to figure out where that might be. You think about cooking, but then you remember the three alarm fire. Let's put in AM because that needs to be there. The 3 AM alarm fire you started last time you tried using the stove. So I'll hit record. Now this remembers my level from my previous session, so I'm good to go. I'm going to flip back over to the copy. You think about cooking, but then you remember the 3 AM alarm fire you started last time you tried. Made a mistake, and that's actually pretty odd now. <laughs> You think about cooking, but then you remember the 3 a.m. alarm fire you started last time you tried using the stove. Okay? So now I have a piece of copy here, and this is to demonstrate that you can copy between sessions. So I'm going to move this piece of copy down below and go back to my main session and zoom all the way out and review some of the sections. And then flip back over to... Okay, that's me talking, so I'm going to highlight this area with my mouse by click and dragging and hitting delete. So it's 2 in the morning and you're starving. Nothing in the fridge, nothing in the cupboards. Now, I picked up that front part at the end of this copy, so I'm gonna find that, I'm gonna cut that and paste it back in the front. So it's two o'clock in the morning and you're starving. All right, so I'm gonna highlight this section here. I'm gonna go up to edit. I'm gonna go to cut. I'm gonna find the area that it ends in. Fridge, nothing in the cupboards. You don't even have dog biscuits hanging around. I think it ends at starving. To find out, I can hit Command Z to undo. Go back, listen to the end of this. And your star. Ah, okay. So let's go ahead and highlight this again and go up to Edit and Cut. And in the morning, and you're starving. There we go. So I'm going to find this area. I'm going to highlight it, and I'm going to go up to Edit, and I'm going to paste. All right. Let's review that. In the morning, and you're starving. Nothing in the fridge, nothing in the cupboard. Great. Now I have picked up the tag as well at the end, or rather the whole last section. They have everything from burgers to tacos, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 7-Eleven, think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. Okay, maybe I just want that tag. Think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. So I'm gonna highlight this area here. I'm gonna go up to edit and cut, and I'm gonna find this at the end of my copy. Seven days a week. 7-Eleven. Think of it. Okay, and I'm going to highlight this section and paste over this again with edit and paste. All right. Now I probably have some talking. I'm going to hit record. Indeed, and... I'm going to flip back over. Okay, and... They have... Ev that's all stuff that I don't need. So I'm going to highlight this area and hit the delete key on my keyboard. Then I'm going to go back into my other session and I'm going to find the area that I recorded that I want to replace by zooming all the way out and listening to some of it. Where's my level from my previous? You remember the 3 a.m. alarm? You think about cook. You think about cooking, but then you remember the 3 a.m. alarm fire you started last time you tried using the stuff. You think about cooking, but then you remember. Okay, let's pretend this area is actually okay. You can see my level bounced up here. So let's find the in and out points. You think about cooking. But then you remember the 3 a.m. alarm fire you started last time you tried. Haha, <laughs> okay, so let's actually edit these two pieces together. Fire you started last time you tried using. Okay, so we have from fire to stove. I'm gonna go up to edit and cut and. For the 3 a.m. alarm fire. And there's fire again, so I'm gonna highlight and I'm gonna go up to edit and paste. Let's listen back to that. The 3 a.m. alarm fire you started last. Uh huh. So I'm going to highlight this selection here, and I'm going to go up to Edit and Cut, and then I'm going to go back to my other session. You think about cooking, but then you remember the three alarm fire that you. Okay, and I'm going to highlight the selection that I don't want, and go up to Edit and Paste. There we go. We've pasted between sessions. Some of you might have uh, slates in other sessions, or you might have recorded other pieces that you want to comp together between sessions to make a sort of Frankenstein cut, or a comped cut as we call it sometimes. So now I have my voice over here. Let's listen back to it. So it's two o'clock in the morning and you're starving. Nothing in the fridge, nothing in the cupboards. You don't even have dog biscuits hanging around. 
You think about cooking, but then you remember the 3 a.m. alarm fire you started last time you tried using the stove. Well, check out 7-Eleven. There's got to be one right near you. They have everything from burgers to tacos, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 7-Eleven, think of it as your own personal walk-in kitchen. Not so bad for a non-voiceover artist guy. I'm going to highlight some of this audio and delete it out because there's a little too much spacing in this area. Then I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to clean this up. By cleaning up the end and the beginning of my recording, I'm effectively calling or doing a practice we call top and tailing uh, to make it ready to go. Now, I realized before I send this out that I should probably add a slate to it so that people know who I am. So I'm going to send my cursor back to the beginning and I'm going to record a slate. Mike Varela. There we go. That's my name. I'm going to highlight the beginning here. I'm going to play this back. Mike Varela. So it's. Okay. And I have a little bit of a mouse click there, so I'm going to zoom in, find that mouse click, and just delete it out. There we go. Zoom all the way back out. Varela. So it's. Perfect. Good to go. I can double click the entire take, and if I go up to my selection length up top here, I can see that I'm at 31 seconds. That's good. If I needed to get in 30, maybe I should uh, either cut a little bit of time or rather actually just go back to the microphone and redo the take. But I'm going to say this is OK. You'll notice that none of the spikes are actually going over zero. I'm getting very close at this point. But that means that I haven't overmodulated or peaked, which is a good thing. Take looks pretty good. I'm going to go up to File and Save As. And then we have a few options. I'll save this to my desktop. I'm going to call this 711-Mike Varela. For an audition, we often will save our takes as an MP3. But if I wanted to use this later down the line for a demo or something else, I'd want to keep the full resolution file around, which is the WAV file. The MP3 is a cut down version of the WAV. And actually, the audio in your computer, as you see it right here in the session, is actually in WAV format. Rather, it's in PCM format in the background, but that's considered WAV. When I go to save the file as WAV, I continue to keep it as WAV, and if I save it as an MP3, I crush the file down in file size and also partly sonically as well to something that's about a tenth of the original file size. For auditions, you don't really care, so I'm going to save this as MP3. Then I go into my settings just to make sure that my settings are correct. I never use variable bitrate, so I uncheck that. We're mono, so joint stereo doesn't make any sense. Encoding quality, I always set to best, and I leave this. And the first time you save your first file, these settings will get remembered in Twisted Wave. You have a variety of bit rates you can use to save your file, and the larger the number uh, equals larger in quality, or more in quality, and the less the number is uh, lower quality. Sort of a bang for buck question here. Most voiceover sort of teeters between 128 and 192. I'm going to choose 192. That happens to actually be the bitrate that Audible and ACX use for their things. And it's a pretty good bitrate for voiceover too. So I'll just leave it at 192 and hit OK. And then I'll save this to my desktop. And we're good to go. I can close Twisted Wave. And I don't need this session either. I'll close that and not save. And I end up with a file on my desktop, which I can quick play. Mike, Mike Varela. Varela. And we know that it plays. And we can email that off to somebody else. And that's it. Recording a take is fairly easy. Just a couple steps to remember. Make sure that you plug the devices into your computer before you start to record. Make sure, and this is very important, that you choose the right input source in Twisted Wave. That would be through either your sound preferences here or by going into Twisted Wave in the preferences or in the audio menu. Make sure that you choose the input as the microphone. Now, some of you guys might ask me, hey, how come I can't hear myself through my headphones and my computer when I'm recording? And I'll show that to you guys really quick. By creating a new session and going into preferences, one option that needs to be checked is playthrough when recording. Again, if you go back to the preferences and window buttons uh, video that I did last time, we sort of discussed this. And then we also discussed latency as well, which is the buffer setting here. Uh, for you to hear yourself by plugging headphones into the side of your laptop and using a USB microphone, you need to hit playthrough and recording. If you're using an audio interface with an analog microphone, you don't need to do this. It'll actually come through the audio interface automatically. Thanks again for watching, and keep an eye on this space for future videos.